Hi everyone, it's Tanya MFK here with your weekly update for the 52 weeks of momentum course that I am taking with Benjamin Hardy. So as you may or may not know, I am a member of the 52 weeks of momentum course and I'm coming in here every week to share the lessons, insights and exercises that we're doing so you can gain your own piece of momentum for the year. So we are already in week six. Yeah, week six already. So if you're sticking along, you're being awesome, right? Six weeks in already. Most people have given up about two weeks into January on their goals. So six weeks in, we're still going strong. Super awesome. Um, one of the things we talked about last week was that we started personal tracking. So before we were doing group tracking in some of our 90 day challenge groups in our course. And so if you are following along, you now have the opportunity to also do personal tracking. Now, Benjamin Hardy also mentioned, he really doesn't suggest doing more than three things if you're new to tracking. It's fortunate for me, I had been tracking for a long time. So I was really excited to just have other partners in crime doing it as well. So I wasn't the only crazy person paying attention to what I was doing every single day. Um, so like I said, I'm already tracking and I know you're probably like, oh, teacher's pet, well, right? <laughs> Whatever, Tanya. I'm telling you, it's not because I'm super, super awesome. So if you know me, um, and many of you do, you know, I am really, really organized. It's kind of my thing. I'm really, really organized. But I'm not organized because it's a natural state of mind for me. I'm organized because I'm really terrified of forgetting anything because I have no ego and I know I will not remember it or do it naturally. I won't do it naturally. So I have to write it all down. I have to put it down there. I am not kidding when I tell you I write down when I'm waking up. When I go to sleep, I write in that I'm brushing my teeth. I Not that I'll forget to brush my teeth, but it helps me understand, like, how much time do I need to do this? How much time do I need to do that? Like, I just, I know that it won't just come naturally for me. Some of you, I mean, bow down. You're amazing. Um, not for me. So I do track everything because it really acts as a checklist. That's all it is. It's really just a checklist. And I write, you know, did I get up at 5 a.m.? Did I journal? Did I do the meditation I wanted to do? Did I do my moment of gratitude? Did I get my clothes ready for the next day? Like, I have all of these things down, and it really just tells me what to do. And because I'm already looking at it, it's easy enough for me to just put a little check mark there, right? So I do it in a Google Sheet. Super easy. I check it every morning, every night. Um, so... I'm super excited to have other people do it with me and I, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's great to be able to look back and see your progress. It's great to be able to make adjustments. If you see that you have eaten donuts three days in a row, you still have four more days that week to change it around. You know, if we're not tracking, then you tend to underestimate, overestimate what you're actually doing and accomplishing. And then all of a sudden your pants don't fit and you're like, maybe I was eating more donuts than I thought. Right? So the tracking is really great as planning, as accountability, as all those things to yourself. It allows you to pivot when you realize that you are not on track. Right? So again, great, great, great thing to do. Um, he says that he tracks only three things for himself. He does his income and his spending, his family time and learning time. Right? So he is aware that when he's paying attention to learning, when he's being deliberate in that practice, that he's spending the time that he wants to with his family. So that's another thing I think it's easy to underestimate or overestimate. You might feel really guilty, like, gosh, I'm not spending enough time with my family. And you look back, you're like, well, actually, I'm doing pretty great. This isn't so bad. Or maybe you're like feeling the opposite. You're like, oh, you know what? I've actually been working a lot this week and maybe it's time to adjust it over here. Again, seeing it in black and white really gives you the opportunity to look at that and see that before it's too late. Um, so yeah, great to improve it. Love doing that. Um, we also are doing the monthly inventory reporting. So I mentioned that. Um, and really this tracking just allows you to make it that much easier for the month. And you know, at the end of this month, we're going to do it again. So if you don't have a great memory and you're like me, you can look back on your tracking and easily accumulate everything that you've done and say, wow, yeah, I did all these things. This is what my month looked like. This is what I didn't do so good at and move forward. So again, really helpful in every area also for our monthly reporting. So another thing before we get into the meat of our lesson is 
Benjamin Hardy mentioned really briefly um, in regards to our tracking and our goals, this thing that Dan Sullivan, who is the creator of Strategic Coach, something that he does, and it's called The Three Wins. And there's actually an article he wrote about it, and it's called Taking Your Three Wins. And he says, um, if you want to measure your progress in a useful way, the best way to do this is to look back. You measure from where you started. Okay. Um, he says, this way you can appreciate and enjoy your achievements and then build on them. So this exercise will allow you to start and finish each day in a confident and positive mindset which makes sense if you're ending every single day with like three awesome things you did. You're like, what are my wins? Yeah, those are wins. I won. I did great. And then setting forth what you want to do the next day. What are my three wins that matter the most to tomorrow? Right? I think it's really important because we have a lot of us have a lot of goals, but if we know that these are the most important things, these are the, the wins when I look at tomorrow and if I do these wins, I know it was a great day. Okay, so it really helps you set that intention, if you will, of what that next day is going to be. So he says he falls asleep, you know, feeling good about the day and waking up excited about the day ahead. He set these great expectations, great plans. Um, he says a lot of times he, you know, his wins end up being better than he even set out for them to be, which then makes the evening accounting even better where you're like, well, it was even better than I thought. And it just gets like a cycle, right? Just every day you're like, I'm so stoked. So I, he, you know, like I said, Benjamin Hardy mentioned this briefly and I just like jumped into it and ran with it. So I added this to my daily tracking. This is something I'm now doing every day and I absolutely love it. If you're an app person, I'm not more of a, I say pen and paper, but I'm still like a Google Doc person, um, but if you're an app person, he actually has an app for this. It's called Windstreak. I have not used it, but check it out. Um, seems really awesome. So it's uh, Dan Sullivan, and the article, if you just want to read, it's really short, called Taking Your Three Wins. I think it's an awesome practice. I've really, really appreciated doing it. So moving into the bulk of our lesson, we revisited epigenetics. <laughs> Epigenetics! Ah, I know, right? If you join us for the first time, you may be like, what did I get myself into? What is this woman talking about? Um, what does it have to do with anything? So let's let's start with where we are. Before we talk about what epigenetics are, let's start with where we are um, in the fields of genetics. Um, the belief is that genes, well, it's come from your mom or dad, were, is what created and influenced who you are. Like who you are is not so much this choice at all. It was really just these, these genes, what was given to you by your parents, what you were predisposed to, what your life was going to look like, your personality was based on genes. Um, basically, humans were a product of their DNA, and what your genes up were at birth is what your potential for life was. And because of this belief, this theory, um, it it really lent itself to a victim mentality. It really lent itself to like, well, I have no freaking choice of my personality or this. That's just the way I am, right? We heard that's just the way I am. And and, and we kind of victim. We're like, maybe you didn't like that. You're like, well, this sucks. I had no choice in this. And ugh, it's just, so, just what I get in life. And again, it really lent itself to this victim mentality. So what the field of epigenetics is showing and for a second there, right? Epi, like epidermis. Have you heard that? It's like above the dermis. It's like epigenetics. We have like above genetics. So what this is showing is that it signals from our environment actually influence our genes and our body, right? So like the outside influences our core being of who we are, like at a biological level. Right, you might you might already have a sense of that where you're like, well, yeah, if I'm in like a happy place, I feel happy. But this goes deeper to like biologically affecting affecting us, right? So like, well, that's kind of a really big deal. So they say um, it's it's the inner. It's not the inner that determines the outer. Right? It's not what's in here that's coming out here. It's really outside which starts to change what we are from the inside. Right. So our biology. And psychology is not fixed. It's, it's actually really fluid. So we can change who we are. We aren't a victim to these genes and, and the DNA that we were given, right? So this is, that's where the like, oh, like big mind blown kind of thing happens and, and really takes away this 
that's just the way I am thinking because we can actually be who we are, who we want to be based on what environments we place ourselves in, right? Like, how's that for power? Like, that gives you some power right there. So he says, our biology is influenced by two things, and that's our perceptions and our environment. So our biology, okay, and I know this is like super science-y, and like, I'm probably the last person to be like a science Sherpa, <laughs> but here I am sharing what I've learned. So, and a lot of these, these quotes and things, as usual, are like directly from Benjamin Hardy and, and also the people that he quotes. So he says, our biology is influenced by two things, so those perceptions and environment. So the way we see it and what's actually around us. So a lot, and we know our perceptions choice as well. And then our environment, the environments that we choose to place ourselves in or are staying in. So to understand a little more about this, there is a video definitely recommended to watch. Um, it's Bruce Linton, and he's the author of Biology of Belief. And the name of the video is Epigenetics, the Science of Human Empowerment. So it's 40 minutes long. As you always know, I end up watching everything on double time. This one I did one and a half times because it's, it's really science-y and I had to kind of like whoop, let it soak in. But it really, it's, it's not like above anyone's head. You can totally get this. It really makes sense. The guy's a great speaker. Um, so do whatever works for you, but I'm telling you, that it's, it really gets the core and the science behind this. It's super empowering. And one of the things that, that Benjamin said is, while you can't change the genes mom and dad gave you, you can transcend the environment from which you were born. Right? That's where your power and your choice comes from. So a quick and simple way to illustrate the power that environment has on you is the way that fleas are trained. Right? Training fleas. I don't even know that I, I've heard that expression, but I, I guess I didn't really think like, Fleas are trained, and maybe I think from cartoons, I pictured like kind of you know they were doing little circus acts or something. So fleas can be trained, right? This is the point of it. Fleas can be trained, and fleas jump. They jump really high, right? For the little bodies, they're like pew pew, jump really high. So what what they show is that you put a bunch of fleas in this jar, and they're clearly jumping like out of the jar. There's like pew pew, and they take a lid and they stick it right on the jar, close it up, and they leave them there for three days. I guess they can live in the jar for three days, like tough fleas. So they're jumping really high and they're hitting their head. And they're like, this is no fun. I don't like that. So they're like jumping lower, right? So they're like, well, I don't want to hit my head anymore. I don't like this. This is no fun. So I'm just going to jump this low, right? We've lowered the bar. So they've lowered their ability. Now they're just like, I can jump this high. Now, if you take that lid off after three days, they don't go anywhere. They're not like, yeah, I'm free again. I can jump up. They're like, we can jump higher than that. Like, that's going to hurt. It's no good. There's no lid, but it doesn't matter. They've, they've been trained that like you don't go higher than that and nobody else is jumping higher than that, right? It goes even deeper than that. When they have little flea babies, their little flea babies won't jump higher than that either. They've passed on this concept of their environment onto their kids and their kids are not going to jump higher than that either. Now, if you take one of those kids and you put them in another jar, maybe a bigger jar where the other fleas are jumping higher, He'll learn to jump higher, right? Like, whoa, there's so much in this. There's so much in this. It's not like some metaphor. This is like really happens. There's a video. You can watch it. Yes, we're recommending it. You can literally type in um, training fleas. It's a 60-second video, and you can see this like right there. Totally just everything, right? The fact that we would pass it on, the fact that we affect other generations with our thinking and our limited beliefs, our limiting environments. You know, we, we lower the bar so that we lower our abilities. And if we raise the bar, we can raise our abilities. Like, well, I just, I thought it was just such a powerful analogy. And I just, it says so much. So he says, uh, you know, when you change your environment, you can change yourself. Human beings are so adaptive on so many levels, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, biologically. We rise or fall to the expectations of what's around us, right? It's called the Pygmalion effect. Whew. So what this does and, and all this, it goes along with the concepts, these core concepts that he's always sharing with us. And these core concepts are your personality is not what shapes your behavior. Your behavior is what shapes your personality. Personality is not what shapes your behavior, right? Well, I'm this way, so I act this way. 
Actually, you act this way, and that's what creates your personality. So if you act sassy, act bratty, that becomes your personality. But if you act kind and you act courteous, that can become your personality. Right? So it's the other way around. It's not another concept that he's always teaching us, you know, and, and reminding us is that it's not about choice or environment. It's about choice of environment. So we have a choice of the environment. And it's not just about our choices or just our environment. It's the choice of our environment. The environments you choose will influence and determine who you become. So environments you choose will influence and determine who you become. And you get to choose the environment that you're in. Right? It is a choice. It's a choice. Right? I know there's all kinds of but, but, but. It's still a choice. Once you realize this, you can put yourself in any environment you want in the world. As I'm coming to you from Vietnam right now. Um, so these are the themes that, that we keep getting. Another one is um, when the why is strong enough, you can figure out any how. The why is strong enough, you can figure out any how. So how is this woman in Vietnam doing this? Because I really wanted to be somewhere else, and I figured out the how. Um, when the internal demand is high enough, the external supply makes itself known. So when the internal demand is high enough, and this is what I, has to be done, the supply of how it's going to work makes itself known. When you make a decision, the universe inspires to make it happen. When you put yourself into new and challenging environments, you can purge out the weakness and grow further into who you want to be. So those last seven things that I spotted out, these are really, these are reoccurring themes and concepts that are always in our lessons and just statements and things. And um, it was really nice that at the end of this lesson, he just kind of reminded us of all of these things. He was like, see, all of this stuff we're talking about really kind of comes back down to all these concepts that we've already been talking about, listening, repeating, right? And I just think all of those are so powerful that I also wanted to repeat them for you. So that's really the bulk of the lesson there. Um, the last part of this was just the excitement that his book came out, which is Willpower Doesn't Work. So we all who are in the group have gotten copies of that. Super excited. We started working on it. And really, other than watching the Bruce Lipton video and listening to kind of this, this video, um, our only assignment is reading Willpower Doesn't Work. For the whole rest of the month, for the next four weeks, that's what we're doing. I'm already in Chapter 3, and I already have like a notebook full of notes from it. I, I do this, right? I do this because I'm, my notebook is one note. So everything's digital. I'm, like, oh, I'm so techy. Uh, but yeah, I have a notebook full of notes as I show my little typing fingers. Um, I really just have it open. It's like a PDF and then I have my notes and I'm constantly just, oh, this is amazing. Um, so it's great. You know, and it's really reinforcing. I think that's the thing. Again, shaping our thoughts, shaping the beliefs um, to, to new information, new experiences. Um, you know, one of the things that he says is that, you know, of, of a lot of the books out there, you know, his book isn't the only book talking about these concepts. He says a lot of them fall short of sharing the concept, sharing the idea, these thoughts, and then they kind of stop. They're like, well, you know, that's it. But you know, it's like, well, okay, but how do I, how do I do that? Now, if the thinking has been off and I need to switch it, how do I do that? And if I need to change my environment, how am I to do that? How am I to work towards that when it seems so impossible? And that's really where this book comes in and really kind of bridges the gap. And one of the things that he, he explains is kind of in the short instruction of that is that if you want to change your life, you need to become invested in yourself. Once you become invested in yourself, you become committed. So the investing in yourself can be, you know, taking a course like I did, listening to this, taking the time to do that. Um, getting a teacher or a mentor, whatever the thing is in your life that it, it makes you become invested, where you own it. You start to own it, because, and then when you're owning it and you're in it, that's when you become committed. He says, once you're committed, you'll have to change things in your environment, right? So that just naturally comes, and if you're committed, there's no way around it. This is going to happen. I'm committed to this. And naturally, the progression of your environment has to change, because your current environment, the way it is, is why you are who you are. So if you're making a change, you're making a difference, your environment so far is what's created who you are and where you're at. So naturally to make a change, the environment needs to change, right? And it's difficult because some things get disrupted at times. And it, sometimes it could be your physical location, it can be relationships, because um, those in relationships with you have to respond 
to the changes that you're making. So that could be something as simple as, you know, if you met with the girls every Friday night for wine and french fries, and you're now going to be committed to weight loss, that's going to potentially disappoint your friends that you're not going to be meeting them on Friday anymore because you need to change that environment. That environment of wine and french fries isn't conducive to your new commitment of weight loss goal, right? And that might upset them. Or they might give you a hard time. So it can disrupt that. You know, it's a really kind of simplistic version of what an example of what could happen. I know things can be a lot more dire than that, but that is part of what changing our environment is. Um, you know, because you're changing what you do, your habits, what you eat, something like that. So he says that the book is not that, it's definitely showing that it's not enough to just want to change. Um, it's about changing your situation and environment to make that happen. And it really takes you along the path to make those take those steps to make those changes, right? So go get your copy, go read it. Super awesome. That's really it for week six, you know, just kind of going back and visiting the epigenetics, some of those old concepts, you know, re reminding ourselves of these, these new truths and reading the new book, which is also going to reinforce all of that same stuff. So if you like this guys and you want to keep following, definitely click that subscribe button and you'll be notified when our next lesson comes up. And if you are on the entrepreneurial path and you want to take these ideas and concepts and adapt them into your business path, definitely come and join us in the Biz Builders group on Facebook. It's totally free and we do live lessons every week, anywhere from marketing and you know new skills, if you're Facebook advertising, MailChimp, whatnot. We're learning stuff every week. You're definitely welcome to come and the link is in the subscription below. So I will see you guys all next week for week seven. Have a good one. Till then, bye.